right, why... <laughs> why are we here? <laughs> yeah, what's up YouTube? Yeah, guys, why are we here at the lovely Hilton Garden yeah. Inn in Huntsville, Alabama? Okay, we're here to pick something up. This is something we do a lot of, actually, and I have never tried to, like, video blog this before because it tends to be this really, like, mushy, organic process. But we are here at 2 early in the morning in Huntsville, Alabama to pick up a telephone switch for the museum. What kind of switch is it? DMS-10. We're picking up a DMS-10. The DMS-10. The DMS-10. So we got a call from Adtran. Uh, they're a major telecom company and they let us know that they have a DMS-10 in their lab here in Huntsville um, that they don't want anymore. So they wrote us an email and they said, hey, DMS-10, if you want it, includes all the fix-ins, all the manuals and everything, and you just have to figure out how to get it. Well, for us, that sounds like a fun challenge. Decisions were made. <laughs> Decisions were made. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I've done this. I tried to count before I before I left. I've done this sort of thing nine times. This is my tenth trip of this nature, right? So I've been. I mean, like by what I I mean, driving across the country. All right. So this is my tenth time driving across the country for the museum. We did Connecticut to Seattle three times. We did the Bay Area. We did Texas. Yeah, we did Texas. We did LA. We did, Cody and I did LA. Um, all three of us at some point went to Central California, to Sacramento or whatever. Who was in that Sacramento trip? That was JKL. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that, uh, that was not me. Okay, you didn't go. It was Astrid. me, and, me, Cody, and Astrid. Okay. Oh, one more thing. Um, they are not letting us film inside of their uh, facility, which is totally fine. I asked if we could roll cameras in there and they said we'd really prefer you didn't. So we are not going to be able to show you the loading process, but I think this is going to go fairly easy. Uh, they already have it palletized, so we'll pick it up after we've loaded the equipment. Here we go. How's the weather, Cody? It's perfect. Are you just saying that because I'm tall? No, it said, it, it's, is the air chewable? It's not as chewable today as it was last night. <laughs> today, it's just oppressively hot. Okay. But, I bought a hammock at uh, Harbor Freight. Uh-huh. And I tend to use it every day. Ooh. -hoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> so how was that? How'd it go? Shockingly well. Yeah. I'm, I'm stoked. So what is our, what's our loading situation usually like? Like what happened at what Stanford or the other ones? That I, I don't think I can say those words in kind company. But. Okay. <laughs> That's heavy, but I'm stupider. <laughs> uh, it's usually a mess. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah, we, we love, I love doing this. This is a lot of fun, but we're, we're kind of used to getting there and having it just be like, figure it out. Um, but this time they had it figured out for us. They were professionals. They were, yeah, they were professionals. So we got all the hardware in the truck in about three hours. Yeah. Pretty, pretty solid. Started yeah. around 11 and finished around two. That's incredible. Yeah. That's nuts. This so, this much stuff's a multi-day adventure most of the time. Yeah, for real. Um, now we just got to figure out how we're going to get it out of the truck because a lot of this stuff kind of wasn't meant to be moved like this and just like all telecom gear, it's got hella fragile parts on it. Yeah. I'm sorry, I just said hella. We had to depalletize it to get it to fit into the truck. So yeah. it's going to present some obstacles for moving it from the truck. Yeah. So 
we've got our work cut out for us, but Matt's gonna go back to Seattle and he's gonna clear out some space in the museum um, ahead of us so that Cody and I, when we get there, we can hopefully have a place to put it. Have a place to put it. We're gonna hit the road and we'll catch you in a little while. give a quick shout out to Brad, Mike, and the guys at Adtran for being so helpful and willing to work with us. So thank you to everyone we met there. Y'all are great. Now about the DMS-10. This is a really interesting switch to add to our collection. First, it's the one and only digital switch we have on display. All of the other switches, including the three ESS, process calls in the analog space domain. That is, they open and close metallic circuits to provide a path for the call. But when the DMS-10 was introduced in 1977, it was the first truly digital Class 5 switch to hit the market, a feat AT&T couldn't match until the release of the 5 ESS several years later. Interestingly, the DMS-10 was released to market the same year as our 3 ESS, but the modular construction of the 10 allowed it to be upgraded and expanded easily to match the rapidly changing telecom landscape. Our 3 ESS, for example, came to the museum from Crosby, Washington in the late 80s, and surprise, surprise, it was actually replaced with a DMS-10 that still serves the town to this very day. Also, we were informed that this particular switch was the last DMS-10 to roll off Nortel's assembly line. We still have to get evidence to support that, but if it's true, it's a pretty cool fact to tell people about on our tours. Anyway, once the DMS-10 was back in Seattle, the next thing we had to do was get it loaded into the building. Now, the building we're in doesn't have a freight elevator or loading docks. No way. No such modern conveniences here. Instead, we had to load the switch through this door, and for that, we called our friends at Western Crane. They've done this sort of thing before, and we knew that they'd be able to do it again. So we called Dwayne, and he came out to do a site survey. The plan was to load the frames into the door and then roll them through the active central office portion of the building and stage them in some empty space there. Once all of the frames were in, we could take time to figure out the exact floor plan and then move them into the space. And I think I've, I've got a machinery platform and I think that's what I'm going to bring over to, okay. to use so we can actually set the frames on the machinery platform and raise it up. And that's exactly what they did. The crane arrived hooked up to the platform, and we began to move the frames out of the truck. Now, talking about doing it is a lot easier than actually making it happen. The frames are quite heavy, and we had to lift them onto dollies to roll them out of the truck and onto the platform. As they hit the lip between the truck and the platform, the dollies tended to slide out from under the frames, so we had to be extra careful about that. Then, we tied the frames to the platform so they wouldn't roll off when it moved. At the door, Peter and Eric rolled the frames into the staging area. We repeated this for all five, and then it was finally time for breakfast. After food, our team began to raise the frames into their vertical orientation and move them into the space they're actually going to occupy on the floor. Once we had a lineup, we could really start to get a feel for how this would impact the vibes and the flow of traffic in the space. One thing we're lucky to have is all of the ironwork already in the ceiling. It makes it mostly easy to attach hoisting equipment and raise and lower the frames as necessary. I've done this without ironwork before, and let me tell you that it is not fun. 
after that, we put on the fashionable orange end caps and hats and added a lovely period correct orange chair. And now we have a whole bunch of steps to carry out before we can power up the switch. First, we need to image the hard drives. It would be a real setback if all that data was lost, so we're really hoping this is intact. Next, we need to locate the DMS-10 physical manual. This document is the full set of instructions for cabling the switch, and as far as I can tell, it's not available online. Now, there is a DMS-100 physical manual, but this is a different book for a different platform, and it won't be helpful for us. There are a ton of connectors on the backplane of the switch, and without knowing exactly where each cable goes, it will just be trial and error getting it wired. If you have a copy or know someone who does, please reach out to us. After that, we'll run a 48 volt feeder down here on its own circuit to power the switch. We are all out of that sort of cable, so I'll have to go to the fancy electrical supply store and get some. Then we'll wire it from the power board and all the way down to the DMS-10. One thing I should mention is that we're also looking for spare cards for this switch. So if you know one that's being taken out of service, please get in touch with me. We'd like to keep this running in the museum for as long as possible, and spares will go a long way towards enabling that. So, we clearly have our work cut out for us, and it'll be a while before we're ready to fire this thing up. There's a lot of cool things coming up, so remember to like and subscribe, and stay tuned for the next video in this series. I promise that I'll spend some time talking about the architecture of the machine and how it actually works. Thanks.